And in our final video on navigating by NDB, we're going to show you uh, one little trick you can use for um, lining yourself up with a ILS or localizer approach. Notice here we have a localizer outer marker, which is an NDB, the Anger NDB. We're going to use this to tell us when we're very near the localizer heading. This will let us anticipate the turn and make things a little bit easier for us. Now we're flying north adjacent to the airport. Uh, we're about 10 miles east and the NDB is just north of the airport itself. And as you can see our uh, ADF is pointing at the NDB which is just a little bit north of the airport. When we cross this line right through here the ADF needle will be horizontal indicating we are immediately east in this case of the NDB. And you can see the arrow pointing to the left to the west and we are directly now east of the NDB. So we've flown farther north much in a way that we might be vectored by uh, air traffic control if we were arriving from the south and landing on runway 18. Notice that, that although we're tuned to the ILS frequency the center portion of the needle is missing and there's no indicator under the VOR1 section to show to tell you that we're receiving the ILS signal and that's because we're just a little bit out of range. We are still getting the NDB signal and you can see that by the uh, arrow uh, pointing to the uh, approximately 10 o'clock position now at this point. And we are now turning to uh, our intercept angle and we're going to use a fairly steep angle just for the purposes of illustrating this technique a little bit better. And you see that our uh, localizer has come to life. The segmented portion of the needle has now appeared and up in the upper left hand corner you can see the um, identifier letters for the uh, localizer. So now that we've been vectored to our intercept angle, and you can see that it's a fairly large one, uh, we'll keep an eye on the ADF needle, in this case the magenta needle, because we want to compare its position with the cursor, which should be set exactly at the actual runway magnetic heading. And as you can see here, we've been turned uh, still a fairly steep angle to our extended center line. We're going to arrive somewhere right around the barren intersection. And we'll continue on our intercept course. and We're well below the glide slope at this time, which is where we should be. And we'll watch the ADF needle, the magenta needle, as it gets close to the green cursor, which is set to our actual runway magnetic heading. And when the ADF needle is within about four or five degrees of the localizer needle, we will start to anticipate our turn. Because within just a moment after that, we will start to see the uh, localizer needle split segment move towards the fixed segment. Still on our heading, watching the ADF uh, needle, and as it gets a little closer, we see that uh, we're going to start to anticipate our turn, and in fact the needle is just about to start to move here. And there it goes. And you can see that that few degrees difference is just enough to tell you when to anticipate starting your turn. And you can also notice that we're doing this at a fairly shallow angle. We are a ways out and of course the farther away from a navigational facility you are, the slower the needles will move. Although keep in mind that the each dot in the King Air represents 1.25 degrees when you're talking about a localizer, not 5 degrees as it would be if it were a VOR. So a localizer is inherently more sensitive than a VOR. And we're uh, continuing our fairly shallow turn here and notice we're going to overshoot just slightly. 
So we correct as we do with the VOR and moved a little bit towards the split portion of the needle. But notice here, because of the sensitivity and the more sensitive as we get closer, you'll want to make very small corrections. You can see that we just turn uh, into the needle just a few degrees and the needle starts to move. And then we uh, return back to our course when the needle is centered again. Uh, notice there we do have a slight uh, wind from the, our right and if we try to hold the uh, course exactly on the, the green cursor needle you'll notice that we uh, will drift slightly to the left the split portion of the needle has drifted slightly to the right now so you do need to correct for winds uh, and you can make small corrections when necessary we're very near the glide slope and we'll start our descent. The rule of thumb is that you want five times your ground speed as your descent rate in feet per minute. And here the winds are fairly modest. Six to seven knots out of the west, so not much of a factor. At the glide slope, uh, we check to make sure our gear is down. And we'll begin our descent. Currently at 130 knots, 5 times 130 yields a descent rate of 650 feet per minute. And we'll watch our glide slope needle much like we watch the uh, localizer needle and make small corrections to keep them centered. slow down just a little bit so we'll decrease our rate of descent 5 times 120 now 600 and you can see we're just a little bit above the glide slope so we'll make a small correction also notice that the center of the uh, green cursor is drifting just very slightly to the right and we'll make a tiny correction for that also just a degree or two to the right we're fairly close to the uh, to the runway now and so it only takes very small corrections uh, to move that needle. You don't want to overcorrect. You want to first stop the needle movement and then move a little bit more in the direction to make the needle come back where it belongs. And we're crossing over the anger NDB, the localizer outer marker in this case. And you see the needles turn into the opposite direction. We'll make our final preparations for landing. A little small movement to the left to get back on exactly on course. Now full flaps on short final. And you'll notice as we get very close to the end of the runway, it takes only a very tiny little angle to the cursor to bring us back onto course. Very small movements at this point. Some pilots uh, fly this with just rudder control at this point, just a tiny touch. My preference is to use a little bit of combination of both as you would in normal flight. And once we're lined up again, we'll hold it on the localizer. And at minimums, we'll uh, take a look out the windscreen and see how we're doing. You can see we're just a little bit above the glide slope. Always better to be a little high than a little low. You know the saying, there's no value in the runway behind you or the altitude above you. And we'll ease back over to line up. And we'll let her come on in very nicely and gently. Still a little bit high. And we'll try and correct for that before we get to the threshold. Yeah, 
and we're just a little bit on the high side here and we come down a little bit I'm gonna land slightly long but not too bad and the advantage of that is if you have enough runway and you can afford that worthless runway behind you you can put it down very very gently So here's the course we took. We were vectored to due west and then into a fairly steep intercept angle. And as we neared our intercept point, we anticipated the turn because of the relationship of the ADF needle to the localizer cursor. So come and visit us anytime at uh, leapremier.com and uh, check out our website. We have several uh, things that might be of interest to you, including some flight training information, and in addition to some written information on uh, VOR and ADF, uh, we have uh, some documents that cover ATC communication, IFR flight planning, and reading approach plates, and you can also take a look at our uh, description of how to do non-precision approaches. Like I said, come anytime, uh, elitepremier.com. And if you go to FS Open, you can click on our team speak and join us there.